So what length and width of canoe to buy is probably one of the most common questions we get here at Middles Mountaineering. In reality, it all boils down to tracking and mobility. So what is tracking? Tracking really defines as how the boat stays when you're paddling it in a straight line. For anybody who's paddled a canoe before, the more strokes you put on one side or the other, the more the boat's gonna want to veer right or left depending on what side you're paddling on. The straighter tracking the boat is designed to be, the less likely that boat's gonna drift one way or the other. So extreme cases are racing canoes. Racing canoes are designed to go in a straight line. You have this giant swath of water, you're racing from one spot to the other, turning around and coming back. They're meant to go in a straight line as fast as possible. Mobile, or being mobile as the term denotes, is basically the ability to maneuver that canoe right or left at a moment's notice. So a lot of canoes that are relatively with that rounded shell, a little bit shorter, are gonna have more mobility, which are gonna really be an advantage, advantageous in rivers, tight bends, things like that, where you have to really shoot down a very specific narrow point to get through something. You have to be mobile at a moment's notice. You gotta do a lot of cross draw and draw strokes. How does that die into length and width? The longer the canoe, the more straight tracking it's gonna be. The shorter the canoe, the more maneuverable it's gonna be. The wider the canoe generally means more initial stability. The narrower canoe generally means more secondary stability. But also, wide and narrow also means wider. You get more carrying capacity. You can carry more stuff, right? Narrow means you have to kind of trim down some things. So when you're talking about width, really that really just mainly depends on how much gear you're carrying or how many people are gonna be in your boat, okay? And that actually also ties in a little bit into length, right? If I have a full family of husband, wife, and two kids, that's not gonna fit into a 16 foot canoe. I need a much longer canoe, which is also gonna give me more carrying capacity, more gear, but it means I'm getting a longer boat. The most common lengths of canoes for tandems are gonna be 16, 17, 18, and 20. Anything beyond 20, and you might as well just get a Viking long ship. Most cases in between there, between 17 and 18, is what most tandem canoes are gonna be, like this Vision 17. This Vision 17 is a great canoe that works really well for all different types of paddling. It's gonna give you straight tracking, but it's, it's, it's kind of in the midst, in the middle of being a longer length canoe. It's not super wide, but still gives you a significant amount of carrying capacity. So generally, 17 to 18 length canoes are like perfect for about 86% of trips you're gonna be on, whether they be boundary waters, river trips, just pass around a lake, even do parts of Lake Superior, these would be fine. When you get into shorter canoes, and you get into solo canoes, or even whitewater style canoes, now you're talking about boats that are designed with maneuverability in mind. They're not gonna be really great on flat water with straight tracking. That's the other thing I didn't mention, is that river boats and flat water canoes are very distinct in how they relate to tracking and mobility. If I'm looking at getting from point A to point B across the lake as fast as possible, I want a boat that tracks really well. And a canoe designed for rivers is not gonna provide that. The same holds true for a river canoe on flat water. If I wanna get from point A to point B very quickly, a river canoe is not gonna, it's still gonna allow me to do that. I'm gonna get from point A to point B, but I'm not gonna get there as fast as possible. Now, how does all this relate to the common man, okay? When I talk to customers about deciding what type of canoe to buy, whether it be long, or wide, or short, or narrow, or whatever, it really boils down to two different types of paddlers. I call them the A and B paddler and the wanderer paddler, or I use another term, but it's not really piece. A and B paddler is someone who is, or a group of folks who are just like, I wanna get from campsite A campsite B from point A to point B as fast as possible and I am basically paddling to my heart's content. I am moving my canoe as fast as possible, right? I'm doing about three to four to five strokes a minute, right? And I'm not stopping to look at anything, I am just moving. A lot of canoes that are designed with straight tracking in mind, I'll use a couple for example, a lot of Winona canoes are designed based on racing canoes. They are designed with straight tracking in mind. Those canoes are great for folks that want to go from point A to point B as fast as possible and just want to get to their camp next campsite so they can set up their hammock and lounge in the sun. Now, for folks like myself, I happen to be the wanderer paddler. I tend to do three to four strokes on one side and I look over here and I look at that. 
or I do a couple more strokes on this side, and I do look over here like that. I'm looking and, and observing things as I'm paddling. I'm not focused on going from point A to point B, so I'm doing what I call the Stevie Wonder. I'm looking around, I'm checking out different things, I'm seeing the eagles that are flying over, I'm looking at these pictographs over here, I'm looking at the moose that's walking across the lake, right? I'm not really focused on that one point. Those boats are nice being maneuverable and having not just straight tracking because I can go check out things or see things or maneuver my canoe in a way where I can get a really good photo shot or I can direct it at a moment's notice if I need to if I'm not going from point A to point B. There's a lot of other things I could have covered in relationship to these two. It's a big topic. We get a lot of questions about it here at Middle Small Hearing. If I didn't go into too much detail or something that I didn't answer you wanted answered, Leave a comment below, I'd be more than happy to answer that. Or even better, if you want to swing into Middlesex Mountaineering and talk to me about more about canoe design, I'd be more than happy to do that because a lot of things I didn't cover. This is Steve with Middlesex Mountaineering. Hope to see you on the water.